Um, since we were talking about stats with Josh Allen earlier, you said about 3,800 3, yards would be in, or 3,500 yeah, 3, yards would be yeah. the possibility and his improvement. If we're talking about single season leaders for the Bills this year, we're not mm-hmm. talking about record, we're not talking about anything else. Mm-hmm. Who, do, who do you feel that would be the lead the league and lead the team in rushing and receiving? I have my thoughts. I'm, I'm curious about you. So. Are you not entertained? Subscribe now. After you hit that subscribe button, be sure to head over to sportscaster.com. And also follow hashtag sports on sportscaster.com. Premier episode will be Saturday, July 20th at 8 a.m. Let's do receiving first. Let's do receiving. So I think it's going to be two, depending on what you're looking at, right? Yes. Receptions, I think and it's going to be one guy. Yards is going to be another guy. It's gonna be two different I think guys. it's going to be two different guys. Is it usually like that on teams? Um, In today's NFL, it's I mean, I remember it's when pretty Land- frequently. I remember when Jarvis Landry in Miami had like 126 catches for... 427 yards. Yeah, he was averaging like three yards a catch. Yeah, that was pretty nice. Yeah. That Good yak. Job, Love that yak. <laughs> catch the ball and fall down. <laughs> In this Bills offense, I don't think it's that. It wouldn't be odd if it was two different guys. Yes. So for me, receptions, I think it's going to be Zay Jones. Really? Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. I mean, he led the league in, he led the team in receptions last year. Yes. Six um, and 10 team. And they, I don't think they added. Anyone more talented than him in the offseason? Is that fair to say? Well, I wouldn't say more talent, but as far as right, now, let me ask you this: Is Zay playing the slot? Yeah, I, okay. think, I think he plays the slot. Well, then, no, no, no. I think Beasley's probably in the slot on this well, team. Well, do you think they're going to go a lot of four wide then? Because if they're if you if you assume that Zay Jones is going to play at the slot, which he did last year, where he got he got all those. I think he's better in the slot. I think he's a better player when he when he can play in the slot. Is he better than Beasley though in the slot? No. Okay. No. I mean, I don't think there's very many guys in the league that are better than Beasley in the slot. No, but there. you think Jones is more – Beasley's only going to be relegated to the slot and Jones is going to go in Yeah, I don't think it makes much sense to put Beasley anywhere other than the slot on this team. And you don't need to. I mean, I'd put him on the bench when the defense is out there, but that's about <laughs> I think it's two the types of – I don't think we've seen Allen yet use a guy like Beasley's going to have to be used. That's going to be the interesting thing to me that I'm going to watch in training camp is how how – Comfortable is Allen in using Beasley, uh, right? Because that short to intermediate stuff is the stuff he struggled with last year. I know we talked about that earlier. Yeah, that's where Beasley shines. Beasley's going to see a t- Beasley. If you were to ask who's going to lead the team in touching or uh, receiving touchdowns, Beasley's probably my pick because that's where his value is going to come in. Is that red zone situation? Because the red zone is. I mean, if you watch the you know plays in the red zone specifically when it's like and goal to go type of situations it's a nightmare to, to try to figure out where guys are I mean oh, that yeah. that's why the, the teams wear two different color jerseys right because in the red zone it's just like a massive it's humanity a mess. and Beasley is so good at just finding little holes and he's a small he's a, just a just a riddle guy so he's really good about he's kind of widow, finding, yeah. he's just a widow so he's you know he's good about finding those <laughs> holes and I think that's where that's where his value is going to come in Aside, aside from that, that's that's what lo- allowed the Bills this year to be so cavalier with their tight end situation. Yeah, like, let's draft some rookies while these guys get their feet wet. We're gonna have a slot guy that's gonna be the safety valve for Allen. I understand. Right. That. So, I, I am because of that reason. I think Beasley would lead the team in receptions over Jones. But as far as yards go, I could see, I could see John Brown leading leading the team in, in yards. Oh, I would take Foster. I would take Foster. I, yeah, that's, I would take and Foster. That's, that's the difference, though. Yeah. I think. Because of being a little bit more seasoned, and I, I mean, reports are in OTAs that um, uh, Foster's like fourth on the depth chart. As no, far as no, he took a lot of snaps with the ones. He did yeah. recently. Okay, all right. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill my source. I mean, Foster Foster struggled a little bit in OTAs with drops, which he struggled a little bit with during the season, um, at least in practice with, yes. with drops. So he's a guy who. If he can hang on to the football, the thing about John that uh, about uh, Foster that's so interesting to me is I said it, and I probably said it to you guys um, after every game. It was like um, if he keeps doing what he's doing, he's a legitimate wide receiver one in this NFL. Mm. But can he keep doing what he's doing? And then he did it again 
and then I said the same thing, and then he did it again. Mm. So, I mean, if you – when you think of a wide receiver one, right, you're thinking of Julio Jones, Antonio Brown, eight catches, 90-plus yards, and a touchdown every game. I mean, uh, that's kind of like the litmus that would be test. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That would so, be I mean, nice. John Brown – I'm sorry, um, Robert Foster has that skill set. And the oh, reason yeah, that I'm taking yeah. the reason I'm taking Jones and Foster over Brown and Beasley has a lot to do with their relationship with with Allen too. That I think that that's an under undersold point for a, a second year quarterback. Yeah, he was so comfortable with. If you look at the the stat split in the last seven games, which is really when Foster came on and and Jones started to kind of find his spot in this offense, mm-hmm. their their numbers are almost identical the two between the two really um so it's really interesting to see obviously foster had more touch or more receiving yards jones had more catches but they were relatively close i think they were within like six or eight catches of each other um and within like 100 yards total so so asking beasley to come in and take targets away from zay jones comfort level all all things equal i think allen's gonna throw it to, to jones Easley's going to have to fight for that that relationship and that that kind of and John Brown, I mean, he just runs fast, right? I mean that yeah. that's why everyone thinks it's going to work so well with Allen is because Allen's just going to throw it as far as he can, and <laughs> he's, and uh, John Brown's going to run underneath it. Well, I um, mean that's a very simplistic idea of it, but I mean, but what does John Brown do other than run deep? I mean, he's not a great. I mean, he runs a slant here and there. I mean, well, he's he not play, a. He played four Arians, so yeah. he has a full root tree and concepts of the big play. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing he is. He's, he, he always knows what the big play is going to be and when the big play is going to happen. I think it's going to happen. To, it's going to have to come down to Dable and design. Yeah. How is he going to design this offense? Well, if he has, if he has a design where Beasley's the number one wideout and the safety valve, and he's going to have all these short intermediate routes. Okay, that's fine. Why are those short intermediate routes going to work? It's because Brown and Foster are taking cover off the defense. Yeah. Once they start creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. Which one of those guys in Foster or Brown? You're saying that Brown's going to be the number one option for Allen to go deep once they take the cover off. So, I mean, Brown. I think Brown. Brown's going to be the guy that Allen just chucks it downfield and hope he runs under it. So you you think he's like a two or three catch a game guy? Yeah, for like sixty yards. John John Brown's going to be the guy that you take in daily fantasy. Yep. Um, because he's going to come cheap, and he could get you two touchdowns and. In the blink of an eye, four receptions. Four receptions. You know, <laughs> I mean, he, he's a guy who could have four catches for eighty-three yards and two touchdowns. True. And you know, he could do that four times in a season, and his stat line looks pretty decent, uh, right? I mean, he's a wide receiver four for me. Yeah. Okay. So, and Beasley is a guy who, I mean, he could come out and catch ten balls for sixty-three yards and a touchdown. You know, so he he could he could be a monster. Yeah, a, a periodic PPR monster. But I think if you're looking for steady eddies and guys that are gonna I mean, if you take what Robert Foster was in the last seven games mm-hmm. and extrapolate that out over a sixteen game season. Oh, it's, it's he's insane. a monster. It's I insane. mean he's a legitimate and he's a guy that I have yelled from the rooftops over the last five seasons. The Bills need a big bodied wide receiver that can run downfield and then go up and win 50 50 balls and that's what robert foster was last year Hmm. and i think that that is a lot more useful to a quarterback than a john brown because john brown has to be open for me to throw the ball to him he's good at getting open yeah but he's got to be open for me to throw the ball to him foster doesn't have to be open well the overall and zay doesn't have to be open Hmm. well zay catches him on his chest quite a bit but that that was it. The overall yeah. scope of the of the Bills, though, if we took a sidestep from the statistics, we did look at the overall scope. In the success that that Foster had last year in the last seven games, and how if you extrapolated that, he'd be a monster. If you is, is that the one of the re, you think Brown was brought in not because of his he the, the Bills plan on using him more, but they they plan on using Foster more. So in the offensive scheme. In order for Foster to be even more successful, mm-hmm. we have Brown there now yeah. to take coverage away. Right. Because okay, Cause now, I, you're not, now you're not shading the safety to one side. Because a lot of people will look at it in their respect, hey, they picked up John Brown, and what they're paying Brown mm-hmm. and Beasley 
they're paying them kind of on par. So you're, you're saying, okay, Foster needs help. They got Brown. Now Brown's going to be the number one, yeah. or Beasley's going to be the number one, if, and Brown's going to be number two, and then Foster's three now. You think it's the other way around, where Foster's the number one still, and Brown is just a complimentary. So, here, so I guess him. here's my here, here's my my question. So okay. you go out and you get Allen, gotcha. right? And Allen turned into what looks like is trending towards being a franchise quarterback. Okay. Tempered expectations. Why didn't you go get him a wide receiver one? Why didn't you go get him uh, – you know, any of those guys, Nik- Nikhil Harry, um, uh, wh- who's, the, who's the other guy? Um, the, 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 two, uh, the two guys out of uh, Ole Miss, sorry. So the, DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf. Why didn't, why didn't you go get one of those guys? The only reason that I can think that you go out and your wide receiver crew this year added John Brown and Cole Beasley is because you don't think you have those two guys on the roster already. Right, you don't have a guy who can take the top off the defense anytime he wants. That's John Brown, mm-hmm. and you don't have a guy that can be the sneaky, sneaky uh, slot NFL guy. Booth. Right, the sneaky, sneaky slot guy. Yeah, I mean you've got a slot guy in Zay Jones. He's good at it, but you don't have a Cole Beasley. You don't have that type of guy. Julian Edelman, Wes Welker. That's what Cole Beasley is, right? Why didn't you go get a big body down the field type of guy? Because he was. Because you've got the guy on the roster he was already. In the CFL, they just got him. <laughs> yeah, that that's one of the reasons that I lean towards Foster still being the wide receiver one in Buffalo yeah. because you didn't you didn't go he's get a guy small. like him. He's six two two thirty, right? I mean, he's a no, big he's guy. Not no, he's not that big. You don't think? He, I don't you I think, think he's, he's like, that big. I think he's maybe two hundred to ten. I don't think he's, he's no, not two thirty. Than that. No way. Yeah, I think he's bigger. No. Than that. What's the difference about two twenty? No, two twenty. Okay, you want me to look it up? He's probably after this off season. He'll but be but I mean, because you don't you don't have that you already have that guy, so you don't need to go get another one. So they felt that the familiarity with Dable. Why? Because in Alabama. because think about it. Why else? Why why else would because if you talk to anybody in the NFL, I mean, look at all the mock drafts that came out. What was the one consistent position that was taken in the first two rounds? Wide receiver. Yeah. And then they don't draft one. Oh, I never thought they were. Gonna. Paul had to wear the jersey to Tom Brady because <laughs> he bet me they were going to take a wide receiver. I said no. Them. Right, but even with the offseason acquisitions, you still needed a go get it guy. You still needed a one, right? You didn't have a if, if you didn't think if you don't think that Foster's the one, then who did they add in the offseason that made you feel comfortable that they didn't need to go get a one? Well, this is a different philosophy that I that I come at because I would rather have three twos than a solid one. And oh, see, I'd, take a, I'd take a solid one all day. See, that's that, that's the argument. Paul so you'd rather so was, so who's a three like who's who's a solid. So you say three solid twos? Yeah. So who's like a solid two to you, just as an example? It doesn't have to be on the bill, just as an example. A solid two? Yeah. A complimentary guy? Yeah. Uh, oh, God. Tyler Boyd? Okay, so you take three Tyler Boyds over Julio Jones? Yes. Okay. Because if, if my number two, if, if I have Julio Jones and... Muhammad Sanu? No. I don't even think he's a solid two. <laughs> I, don't think Robinson, who's... I don't think he is. I don't think he is. I mean, but that's who Julio Jones has had on the other, other side of him, though, and well, he's been a monster. Who? Muhammad? Julio Jones. Julio Jones. Well, yeah. Okay. So was AJ Green when he okay. had Muhammad Sanu. Yeah. Okay. That's not. I mean, so I, I don't. I guess I don't understand I'm the concept if, of if you if you you're saying that Muhammad Sanu is a solid two. No, I'm not. I'm just. I'm. I'm asking because if to me. I would rather have a Julio Jones who can make a Muhammad Sanu look better than he is okay. than three Tyler Boyds who you still don't know what, they, what he is. My, my, my point. And I understand that. your point in terms of Tyler Boyd, not necessarily Tyler Boyd, yeah, not, but that type of guy. Well, I mean, if I have those, then here's what happens. When I, if, if my goal is to win in the playoffs mm-hmm. and be successful in the playoffs, a lot of times that number one is already gone because they already defensive scheme to take him out of the game. Now, if I have a number one and three knuckleheads, how am I going to pass the ball? What am I going to do? How do I – I have to come up with more inventive schemes either to put that number one in different spots. Mm-hmm. If I have three twos and you can't concentrate on which guy I'm going to go to, you don't know. They're all equally talented. I can put them anywhere. I can put them in any spots. And I'm going to, I'm going to confuse the defense, which is the number one goal you have to have in a playoff game to win it as far as, you know, going forward in that respect. I, you don't know who to cover. Sure. Now, I understand your point. I can understand both sides of the point. Yeah. Would I like to have Julio Jones? Yeah. I'd love to have Julio Jones. 
They don't have him on this roster. I'm saying that Beasley, nice too. Jones, nice too. Yeah. You know, you, you, would you say John Brown's a two? I don't think, I don't think Beasley's a nice two. I think Beasley's a three. He's a three. Yeah, I don't think there's any team in this league that he's a number two on. Well, because of the... The slot, rec- the slot receiver has been so... Yeah, amplified. I mean, again, I think, I think it depends on what you're calling it, too. Right? I mean, I get, yeah, I get what yeah. you're saying, yeah. A second option, you know, there's a difference between a two-wide receiver, a number two-wide receiver, or a second option on the offense. Right. I don't even think Jones is even... I don't even think Jay Jones is the second option on the offense. I think the first option is you're going to have Beasley or Foster, mm-hmm. and then you're going to have McCoy, mm-hmm. and then you're going to have Allen running. You still think, McCoy, <laughs> you still think McCoy is going to be that, that integral to this offense? I think he, with all the additions that they made, he has to, be. to to make it to where he doesn't uh, have to be. I anymore. think. I mean, they've added enough, right? So they've added Gore, who, in my in my opinion, is probably out of the four wide running backs, the one that might get cut. And I know a lot of fans don't necessarily agree with that, but he was your insurance policy. He's, he didn't get and he's there to help the young guys learn how to work out and learn how to run between the tackles and learn how to stay healthy throughout the course of a season. Is he? Is he the oldest running back? He's in the, in the NFL. I think he's one of the oldest players in the NFL, isn't he? Yes, he because I heard Gore? Freddie was making a comeback. Because <laughs> Gore's <Jeez. laughs> Yeah, I mean Gore is. I don't know. Gore's a great – I love Frank Gore. I have loved him for quite some time. I think he's a better running back than a lot A lot of people give him credit for. I just – I don't know, man. I mean, if you've got the option, if you've got you got four guys, right? If you're only going to keep three, who do you cut instead of Frank Gore? You just signed Yeldon to a two-year contract. Perry. You've only got four, though. I'm saying you got four. Oh, the four – I'm not counting Perry or I mean those guys are they're fodder. So you got, right? you're talking they're about fodder. You're talking so they're about fodder Yeldon? for the fourth for the fourth preseason. So you're doing what McCoy? McCoy, Yeldon, Yeldon Singletary, Singletary, and Gore. Gore. Gore's odd man out. Right. Because, right. because because of age. Well, because of age and because he he has a skill set that's easy to find. Between the tackles. Yeah, but not up here though. Sure. I mean, okay. I mean I, I've always I I mean I've bagged on him a couple of times. He's got a six wonder lick, but the guy knows football. <laughs> So leading rusher, I just I think it's going to be McCoy just because he's still the most talented running back on that yeah. on that team. And depending on record, whether or not Singletary will get in because if they're two and six if by week eight, you're, you're, I mean, listen, you're not going to see McCoy anymore. If, they, if you're two and six by week eight and McCoy's playing anywhere close to what he was two seasons ago, you trade him so fast. Oh, my God, yeah. You yeah, trade him so fast. You should have traded him two years ago. Do you think that he would be – do you think that he's – as a possibility of being – like, by week if eight. If he's averaging four yards a carry by week eight and your season's done, trade him. He's got 30 catches and 800 yards rushing. Or no, I'm sorry, week eight. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. If he's got 30 catches and, let's say, 600 yards rushing. By week eight, trade yeah. him. You trade, trade him for whatever you can get for him. Depending on the Bills' record. Yeah, I mean, if your season's over. But I'm saying, what if you're winning? I, I mean, I still trade him. You still trade him? I still trade point. him, but that's me. Oh. I've been wanting to trade him for the last two seasons. I've been thinking he's That's he an interesting concept, though. I mean, if you're if you're 5-3 and three in week eight, yeah, and he has 600 yards rushing and 30 receptions, He's doing well for you. I trade him and I ask more because he's worth more at that point. That's so interesting. because I don't have to trade him. You think and you I should shouldn't be him trading him because this is the last year of his deal. I understand that maybe one last hurrah for him. But what do you think that sends a message to for the other, the other players on the team though? Like if we're on That's the who they year, trade him deal. to. Yeah, <laughs> I mean if they trade him to, uh, you know, I thought a good spot for him last year would have been Houston. Because Houston was a running back away from being an extremely dangerous football team. I mean, who did they have? Who was the running back last year? Who did they have? Miller? Dante Foreman with a blown Achilles. Alfred Blue and Lamar Miller, who yeah, were a good tandem still, three seasons ago. I'm surprised they didn't go get a running back this year. So yeah, I don't think they didn't try to go get her. Well, Dante Foreman's supposed to be back, and I think they're really high on him. But let's say he comes out. Really high let's say now. he comes out and struggles. Right? Watson finds his stride. Mm-hmm. They keep Clowney, who shows up eventually to play, because no one's going to pull a Le'Veon Bell ever again after what happened to Le'Veon Bell. Um, why does he think that'll work? I don't understand why he thinks that's going to work. I don't know. It never works. 
So I, I don't know why. So so you know, let's say that JJ Watt's back, right, from his injury. Mm-hmm. So that's the team that you roll out with. Dante Foreman struggles. LaShawn McCoy comes out and he's averaging four point two yards a carry, thirty catches, six hundred yards at the trade deadline. I mean, I'd give a third round pick for for that. Ooh. Because you, your windows are so small in the NFL these days. Yeah. But you know, a third for mm, that's tough. A third for a rental of McCoy. I mean, if he, if if third's a starter. If it, yeah, but if your defense is as good as it can be, which by all accounts, if you have JJ Watt, it will be, and your offense is clicking on all cylinders, and you look at it and you go, man, the only thing we need is a running back who can be a playmaker for us. Mm-hmm. That that to me is worth a starter for future seasons because your window's going to close. You're eventually going to have to sign uh, Watson, right? You're going to have to re-sign Hopkins. You're either going to have to pay Clowney or he's going to leave and you're not going to have any, you're not going to have anything to show for him. That's the thing I think is the tough part because they don't want to pay, they don't want to give Watts, uh, Clowney Watson's money. Right. That, that's why they haven't signed him yeah, exactly. long term yet. But why not take a run with a running back who's on an expiring deal, who's successful, knows how to be successful in the league, is by all accounts a great leader when he come when he steps on the field. I mean, I'd trade th- I'd trade a third for him. Oh, it's so tough. If I'm if I'm Houston, I would trade a third for him. Assuming all of those things fall into place. If he comes out and he's, you know, LaShawn McCoy again, if he's ninety five percent of what LaShawn McCoy has been through his entire career. Yeah. Obviously he's aging, he's you know, he's not gonna be what he was when he was 26, 27 years old. But you know, I definitely would. Jesus. Yes, dear. Hey, what's going on? 